I'm sorry, Shara Betachin, the, the gate of trust. So we just finished the Shara, Shara Yichud, the gate of unity, and this is called the, the gate of trust. So to understand what the author is writing. So he writes, the beginning of Shara Betachin, the gates of trust, he writes like this. Since we established the idea that a person has to serve Hashem, what are we talking about? That it's worth to explore the most important thing, which is the idea of trust. Okay, so what is, we spoke before, we learned about Shar Yechud, the gate of unity, Shar Bechino, the first three gates. What is the what is the author basically saying? What is the what is the author saying? The author is saying like this: that up until this point, what we understand now, in terms of the creation and creator, is that the world functions in a very harmonious and orderly way. That's the, the creation functions this, in this in this state, and. From this mindset of the order of creation and the orderliness and the symmetry within creation, from this mindset, that's where trust is going to emerge from. So what is what is trust? What is trust? So there is there's a muna, there's belief in Hashem, the belief in the oneness of the Creator, and Hashem there's one God, and the oneness of Hashem. That's one understand, one thing. And then there is the the bitachem, the trust in the oneness of Hashem. So really, what bitachem is? What is trust? Trust is belief in action. So let's say I believe. You see a person walking on a on a, on a, on a tightrope, and the, and they're they're holding a child walking on a tightrope. So you believe that the person that's walking on the tightrope knows what he's doing and he's not going to drop the child. Bittach and trust is you're the child. So I don't just believe that the person is not going to drop me. I trust him and therefore I allow him to carry me on this tightrope. So Bittach and trust is emuna, faith, is belief in action. And what is the idea of betachem? Betachem, what is the idea? What, what is the betachem of? What is the trust of? The trust is that since I see, and this is what he's saying, this is what the, the entire structure of the, of the book up until this point is. Since he's saying that we see the beautiful harmony and the perfect symmetry and orderliness of creation, that everything is working in sync and everything is working together to create this beautiful painting. Therefore, if we pull it down into our own life from, from, from the from the macro to the micro, and we draw it into our own life, we'll say that the same thing is also in our personal life, that every single aspect in our life is exactly orderly and exactly in the correct manner. This is one understanding of, of bitach, one understanding of trust. If there's a, there was a sefer that was written, that was published by the Chazonish, and um, it's called the Munibitachim, and it's a popular sefer, it's a popular book. It's called Belief and Trust. A Munibitachim. It's in Hebrew. And he wrote it for himself and was published. So, in the beginning of the book, in Perik Aleph, what he, what the Chazonish does is basically, if you read it, he's basically taking the ideas, what it says already in Chayvus Alamavus, particularly in the part of Shara Bechina, in the, gate, the second gate, where it talks about the, the symmetry of creation on the micro level and on the macro level. And he talks about this a great length to, to speak of the wonders of the Creator. This is that a person is born and has exactly enough mother's milk and the mother takes care of the child. This is literally what the Chavis HaLavavis writes. This is what the author writes. Then he talks about the, bo the body parts, how everything is working in order, and um, and how you know how you digest food, and how how you think, and how everything works in its proper order. And then in chapter two, the Chazonish writes like this. 
He says there's, there's a mistake that people think that what is trust, what is betachem, what is this idea of betachem? And uh, he says the mistake of thinking is that trust means, and he says this is the pichpichs, and I'm going to explain what this, what this means. The mistake is thinking that everything is going to be okay, he, and everything is going to work out fine. He says, What does betachem mean? Betachem means that there's nothing happenstance, that there's nothing, there's nothing random, there's nothing out of order. That, which, that is what trust means. To trust that there's an orchestrator to the creation. Not that things are going to work out for the better. Maybe it's not going to work out. Maybe there's, maybe there's a reason why things are not working out for the better. Maybe because of your sins. Maybe there's punishment. Whatever, whatever the reason is. Maybe there's some, you know, some macro reason why things don't seem to, to be appear in a better way. So he says, what is Betachem? Betachem means trust is... To, to secure this idea, this awareness of faith, even when a person is going through a hard time, that nothing is, there's nothing that happens since it happened to you, but it's actually always intentional. And amuna bechines halacha, we talk bechines ma'as. Amuna means the way a person understands it, conceives it. Faith is the way it exists within the mind. And we talk in it, trust is the way a person actually actualizes that. At the end, even though he wrote in the beginning that there's a mistake of way of thinking, he says at the end, yes, I mean, that there's shayru ruach kodesh v'slavi ruach oiz mavasri ki omni yisar Hashem. Then there's another level of betachem, which is a type of ruach kodesh, a type of divine divine wisdom, which becomes revealed to the person that things are actually going to work out for the better. So this is this this way, the way it's written in the Mordechai betachem, in this in this book, is. It's very consistent with the understanding of the Chavis Halavas, the understanding of what it's written in the, in this, in the Sefer, in this book, in Shar Betachem. That what is Betachem? Betachem means trust. Trust that nothing is happenstance, nothing is random. Life has order, and there's an orchestrator which is orchestrating your life in its perfect harmony. Whatever the situation is, whatever, whatever difficulty you're going through, to know that there's Hashem is with you, Hashem is watching you, and orchestrating your life. That's one level. But it comes along the Baal Shem Tov and Chassidus and reveals a much deeper level in Bitachin. What's the deeper level of Bitachin? The deeper level of Bitachin is, the deeper level of trust is, Habitech Bashem Chassi Sayyavanu. That someone is Baitech Bashem, someone that has trust in Hashem, Chassid, kindness, compassion will surround this person that you draw down what you have trust in. Or in another teachings of the Baal Shem, the teaching is of, that Hashem is tzilcha, Hashem is our, our, our shadow. In other words, how we act draws down of what you act. And the truth is, this idea, even though it's, it's, it's explained more in Tayyus Chassidus, it's actually brought down already in the Sefer Ikrim, Reyes of Halboy, who is one of the great Spanish scholars that lived a little, right before the time of the, a little before the time of the expulsion of Spain. And Rabbi Yosef Alboy in Sefer Ikim writes like this, someone that has trust in Hashem, kindness will surround him. Even though he's not worthy to receive it, the path of Bitochen is to draw down pure free kindness, which means in comparison and not compatible to your actions. That's the nature of trust. The trust is that I have trust, or the language of the Tzamaq Tzadik is, trach gut gut. Think well, think good, have good positive thoughts, and you're gonna draw down positivity into your life. You're gonna draw down, so you're going through a hard time. Let's understand this. You're going through a hard time. This, you're going through a challenging time in your life. Something's complicated and something's not working out. In the betachin of the chayvus alavavus and the trust of the chayvus alavavus, you have to say Hashem runs the world, and this is exactly orchestrated, and nothing's been mikra, nothing's a happenstance. And uh, like the Rambam writes in Hilchas Tainus, that if a person says mikra mikra, a person says, "But my life is happenstance," is is aredos derech achzari. You're an achzar. You're you're cruel. You're czar. You're you're foreign to this world. You're not recognizing that Hashem is communicating with you. So, if you're going through a difficult time, say Hashem Hashem is controlling the world. My life. 
has orchestration, just like in the world of nature. There's different parts of nature and everything is working in symmetry and harmony with each other to create this beautiful tapestry. Same thing goes to my life. Maybe I'm going through this thing because of the other thing and everything will challenge itself out and then it'll work itself out and then in the bigger picture, it'll, it'll, this is exactly the way it should be. That's one level of betachem. The other level of betachem is, is chesed chinam. You're drawing down pure kindness, incompatible to your actions. And then you can ask the question, so what is, uh, what schus, what merit do you have? So the, the, the below parallels the above, but on what merit could you draw down this, 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 these blessings? You're saying, I'm going through a hard time, but I trust and I have faith that it's going to become different and it's actually going to be good. And I look at the negative situation, I see that there's a, posit- there's a posit- positivity that's going to emerge from this, and I trust it, and that's where you actually bring down the blessing. So how do you, what, well, what merit do you have to bring down that blessing? Because maybe you're not meritorious enough. Maybe you don't have the schus to draw down that blessing. You don't have the merit to draw down that blessing. And the answer is, that it's the way it's spoken about in the sikhs, is that the, the trust itself, the fact that you have trust, that itself is the kli, is the vessel to draw down the blessings. So you're going through a hard time and you're struggling with a certain issue, you trust that it's going to be good, your trust and your, your think and your mindset is a positive mindset, it's going to work out. You think that it's going to be work out and it's actually going to become that way. And that itself, the fact that you worked on yourself to have trust, that teva, the nature of Hashem is to give good, the nature of good is to give good, and Hashem is the nature of our Kodesh Baruch is, is a toiv ayin, is a, is, a, is a good eye, is an openness, a giving. That's that's the nature of a college. That's the nature of a, of, of, God, of Hashem, the Creator, to give life, to sustain life, to, to bring forth, to develop, to further. So when a person has trust in that, trust in that force, you draw down the blessings into your life. So this is the, this is the deeper way of understanding trust. Now, what you could say is, on one level, you can say that in the 10th century, 11th century, up until a certain point they understood trust on one level. And then came along the Baal Shem, and you see already, it's already started earlier time, came along the later tzaddikim, the later righteous ones, and revealed another aspect of trust. And not, not only is trust trusting that it is, the way it is, exactly the way it should be, but that you can draw it down. And you could say, really, that it's like an argument between one way of thinking and another way of thinking. But on a deeper level, on a deeper level, the trust that was revealed through Chassidus, through the light of Chassidus, and the teachings of the Baal Shem Tov, the trust that was drawn down through this light was a type of trust that was not available before this time period. Because not only was this an argument between two, two ways of saying things, that whether trust is just acceptance, or is trust, in other words of saying, is, is trust passive, or trust is active? Passive trust is, I trust this is the way, this is the will of God, this is the will of Hashem, I accept it. That's passive trust. Active trust is, I trust that Hashem is a teva the nature of good to give good, and I trust it's going to be good, and I think it's going to be good, and that in itself draws down the blessing that it should be good. That's an active participatory event. It's not, it's not trust as a passive act, a passive act of acceptance, but it's trust as an active participation on the unfolding of the goodness within my life. And the truth is that this is really has to do with the revealing of the oil of Mashiach, of the, of the, of the, of the light of, of redemption, of redemptive light. That the structure of creation is that first it's top down and then it becomes bottom up. So the top down relationship is there's a hierarchy, I'm on the lower rung, and let's say we'll talk about the, in this terms of the structure of the giving of the Torah. So there's Vishanam to Levanecha. The father, the adult, teaches the child. So the, the movement is from the top down. However, when we say that there's a rising of Malchus, the rising of the elevation of the lower, that the ele- that the tra- this transformation is, that, the elev- that, that, that we draw down the light from above in such a way that slowly the tr- there's a, a transformation of the lower, of the Makabal, the receiver, that Malchus also be- starts to become elevated. What does that mean? That means that now, in the, when it talks about the time of Mashiach, 
it talks about the time of redemption, it says, So Chazal say, that the parents will return to their path of righteousness through the child, which means instead of the movement moving from the top down, from the parent to the child, it's the child inspires the parent. That's the whole idea of tshuva, that is coming from the lower. That's why tshuva, tshuva that's why there's a movement of tshuva in this, in, this, in this generation, a movement of return, which is the movement of return is despite the fact that I don't, I'm, despite the fact that I lived a certain way, I'm choosing now to change my path. And tshuva is not a mitzvah. There's no mitzvah to do tshuva according to the Rambam. There's no mitzvah because mitzvah means that it's a command. Hashem says you have to do that. If it's have to do that, then I'm not doing it because my, I want to do it. The mitzvah is, the command to do tshuva is when you do tshuva, this is the way, the structure that you should do tshuva. But tshuva is actually an act. The act of return is an act of the lower desire to become closer to the above. So therefore, what we're really saying on a very deep level is that what, what the Baal Shem Tov and what Chassidus revealed, that what is the idea of trust? That trust is not passive, but trust is participatory. Trust is active, that we, we work on trust, we elevate ourselves, and we trust that it's going to be good, and then we draw it down, this is actually something that was, only became possible to be revealed in the last few hundred years. So that's why it was revealed one way over a certain period of time, and then it became revealed another way from that, that time forward. So now we have these two dynamics, these two forms of trust. One is a passive trust, that we trust, that everything is exactly orchestrated from the creator and it has to be exactly the way it should be. And the participatory trust, which is an act of trust, which is that I am part of the unfolding of the goodness and the blessings that I'm going to receive in my life. I trust in HaKadosh Baruch I trust in God, I trust in Hashem, that Hashem is the source of all goodness, and therefore He wants good for me and draw, to draw that goodness, and that by living that way, believing that way, and feeling that way, we actually draw down, draw down these blessings. So we have these two paradigms. So what do we do with these two paradigms? So a one, a one way of thinking about them is that... We can, we can use, just like in, there's, there's an idea of time. So there's, there's like the past and the, so there's the past understanding and the present understanding. The past is passive, the present is proactive. In time, just like in time there's a past and a present, where the way it was, used to be thought about and the way it's been thought about, taught about now, that also could reflect two states within our own consciousness. There's a level of consciousness where we're in a state of katmus, of constriction, which is, means we're tied to our past. We're stuck, we're stuck in, in, in an old narrative. We're stuck to our past stories and therefore it's pulling us down. Uh, the, the difficulty that we're going through is pulling us down so their past is informing the present. And then there's another way to be, which is the godless state, which is the, the, the expansive state, the, the, the larger state of I, the bigger state of I, which would be the present state moving into the future. So these two states of katnas and godless, of constriction and, and, and greatness, can also be understood in terms of our relationship to trust. When a person is going, when a person is in a state of godless, when a person is in a state of greatness, which means they're looking for the present, moving for the future, and they're saying, I'm not tied to my past, even though my past, let's say, this business deal didn't work out, and this relationship didn't work out, and that thing didn't work out, and the other thing didn't work out, and based on my past experiences, I, just, I give up, but I have trust and say that this is exactly the will of Hashem. The reason why this relationship didn't work out, the reason why this job didn't work out, because that's the Ratz Hashem, that was the will of Hashem, and there's no mikra, there's nothing happen, as happenstance. That's living from a paradigm of past, of katnas, of constriction. The other way of living is saying, I don't care what actually happened up until this present moment. I'm living future, future sense. I'm, using, I'm, I'm looking forward, I'm looking to the future, and I'm saying, despite the fact that everything happened to me, despite the fact that things are difficult, despite the fact that I'm going through hardship, but I'm choosing to believe and to have faith and to trust and act this way, because it has to be actively. You have to trust, you have to embody it. You're not just an idea, but you have to act, start acting this way. You start acting, you say a person going through difficult with, 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 with um, financial difficulties, to have active trust is to trust that it's going to be good and start acting as if it's already good. This, this, you're holding your, it's, it's even holding your posture in a different way. You hold yourself differently because you're, you're thinking about the future and you're thinking about the possibility of what's going to become of your future because you have the trust that it's going to become your future and it will become your future because you have that trust. 
So you start have to act, you, start, you have to start acting this way. So these two levels of trust in terms of passive or active can also be seen reflected in our own life. And really we have to gauge ourselves in terms of our life because we always have to live with Bitachon. We always have to live with trust in Hashem. And the question is, are we stuck in a small state, in a cotton state, to our past? So then we can rely on that type of trust and say, okay, but you know, Hashem runs the world and it's true and everything is exactly the way it should be. But when a person, when a person feels more empowered, they should start activating their trust and proactively having trust moving from the present into the future. So these two levels of trust can actually be states within our own states of consciousness and depending on the state that we're living at, we can choose which state to be in in order to, to gauge that, to understand how we're going to experience trust and to, to truly try to work on to get to the higher level of trust that it's not just a passive act that I just trust that it's going to be this, that, that this is exactly the will of Hashem, this is exactly the way it should be, but I trust in Hashem, and therefore all the kindness and all the blessings and chesed chinam, all the divine kindness that's free, that's beyond what I deserve, and I, the reason why I do deserve, even if I say it's beyond what I deserve, because I trust that, and that in itself is the vessel to receive those blessings, and I receive all the blessings in my life in a positive and healthy and a holy way.